So welcome back to Fly Past RC and this is the final video of our Falcon Evo wing. Uh, in this video we're going to look at installing uh, all the electronic components of our wing. So by the time we finish this video you'll be up and ready to go flying. So when it comes to installing our ESC, so we have our ESC here. So we're going to be installing that. Um, just depending on where you want to put it, there's loads of space inside, so you can mount it inside. But for me, what I've done is I've cut out this insert here, which goes underneath the carbon spar, and there's a little hole here. So what I'm going to be doing is going to be placing the ESC in this hole. These wires are going to come underneath. They're going to come underneath the uh, the spar and then poke out the top. So what I'll do is I'll put that in so I can't do both with one hand and I'll show you what it's going to look like. So we've mounted our ESC um, so it's covers with the foam so it looks nice and slim so you can't see over the top. Got the heat sink coming out the outside. Eventually this little hole is going to be filled with hot glue and these tabs, uh, so these, uh, these are going to be pulled out still face up so I'll be able to get the uh, plug the motor wires leads straight into there. Uh, I've also created uh, this out of the uh, lid of my paint can. It's going to slot over the top of this. So we've got this acting as our air scoop, so it comes across there. So it's going to scoop, help scoop air into the ESC and keep the ESC cool. Also means we've got still got all this space in here available to us. Um, the wires just poke out there. Uh, Velcro is going to be applied across the top. Uh, wires poking out, easy access uh, for everything else. So as you can see, our servo leads when we mount them in are going to come into here as well on both sides. But it keeps everything out of the way for now. Looks cool. No, that was nice and streamlined. So for this part, this is where we're going to start mounting our servo. Now what I've done is I've got this wing. So I've already drawn around our template. So we place the template on. And we've drawn around and we've got our we've got our nice shape here for the servo that we know we're going to cut out. So we know where the servo is going to be placed. Now this is a servo that I'm going to be using. So what I've done is I've placed it on the template, like that, and then I've just drawn around the outside with a black pen. So you've just drawn around the outside and then it's marked up where I'm going to be cutting. So I'm going to be cutting around the outside of this line here. Now what I'll do is I'll show you how I cut the wings, how I bed servos and wings, which I find it, it's the easiest way for me. So what we're going to need is going to need our scalpel. And what I use is my Dremel with this sanding bit on the front. Now the reason I use this is because this sanding bit is the exact same width pretty much as a servo. So I know when I sand into the foam I only need to go as deep as this nozzle here and it means that my servo is going to bed in the foam nice and uh, nice and tightly. Uh, it's going to be in there, I don't need to go any further down. So what I'll do is I'll cut round, cut round the outside mark with a scalpel and then when I put the sanding bit in as you get to the edge where you cut the scalpel, you'll see bits flick out, and it end up it ends up with a nice, quite clean, uh, um, quite a clean hole for your servo. So simply scalpel in, and we're going to cut all the way around the outside. Right, so now I've cut around the outside, it's time to sand out the centre. So there 
we go, pick out some of these loose bits that just come off from the Dremel. Pick out these side bits where the servo arms, they're, they're like the strengthening bits of the servos go in. You'd normally bolt them in, but obviously we can't. So, pick them out. Make sure the edges are nice and neat. So now we can get our servo and we can place it over the top of the hole, make sure it's okay. And what it's going to do now is just mark on this bit where the, uh, where the leads are coming out the back. So just a little mark there. And then I'm just going to cut there with the just a single incision with a scalpel. So now we've got all our hole cut out. It's a simple case if we are to slot our servo in, poke the wires into the hole that you've drilled. And now you have a nice clean fit for your servo. So it's nice and flush with the wing, sticks out a little bit. So you can obviously sand down further down and just get it in get it in slightly tighter. Um, but it sits in there nice and neatly. And then what we'll do is eventually once we've got the whole thing in, we'll mark up the cable and we'll just cut a hole, cut a thin line all the way through the wing, and then we'll just slot the cable into it. There we go, nice neat cable, servos in flush, comes out the side, and obviously what we're going to do is at the end we'll cover, recover the servo and this part with, um, with the covering film, and it'll just strengthen over the, the cuts that we've made here. So once you get your servo bedded in, the next thing to do is assemble our uh, push rods, so our, our linkages, it's going to connect our servos to our ailerons. Now what you see when you obviously open your kit, you've got two Servo, well, you've got two like aileron arms, control horns, then you've got two little carbon rods, two metal linkage brackets, two plastic linkage brackets, four of these, uh, the, you know, the screw fixings that are going to fit on the end of these carbon rods, and then four screws which are going to hold the, uh, the servo or well, the, the control linkage horns in place. So, assembly of these is very, very simple. All you need to do is get your carbon rod, get each one, get one of these per end, and glue them on. Use the nice strong glue, obviously, and just glue them in place like that. Once you've glued them on, you're going to need to put a plastic bracket on one end. Just simply screws on. And then on the other end, on the other end, we're going to screw our metal linkage. Screw on. So once it's glued together and you've got your arms on, you're the whole linkage is going to look something like that. Now we've got our control horn uh, glued together. The next stage to do is to add our linkage to the uh, for the ailerons. So it comes with two pieces. You just want not to just snap that top bit off, and that's going to clamp through our piece of wood. And we're just going to drill, uh, just going to screw some holes together, and it's going to hold that in place. It's going to hold it on. So what we do once we've got our linkage rod here. We're going to line up one end of it with the mounting on our servo here. Make sure it's nice and straight because that's where our control that's where the control arm is going to attach to our servo. Make sure it's straight and it's going all the way back to the ailerons. That looks good. And then so what we're going to do now is we can get our linkage so we know roughly where it's going to be placed here. And we know everything's going to be straight, so we can move that out of the way. Place that onto the aileron where we need it. Simply get our pen and just mark on, 
just a corner will do. So we know where this is going to be sitting. So the next stage to do is hold it in place. Oops. I'm just going to mark it slightly better so I know where I'm going to be making my holes. So there we go. So now we can see where we're going to be making our holes to put our screws through and then clamp onto the back plate through the back of the wing. So we've got our two screws, got our screwdriver, I'm just going to make a quick hole in with the scalpel. This is a bit of a guide for the screws, just make it easier for them to get through. So now we have our linkage glued on, uh, glued on, screwed on nice and tight. There it is. So what we're looking for is these holes to be just over the hinge area that we've got. So these four holes should line up down to the tape down there. Now a good thing to do as well is just to get some clippers and just cut the back of these screws off. They're quite sharp. You don't want to be scratching your table when you put your plane down. So for this next stage we need to get our radio ready and our receiver. So I'm using my Spectrum uh, and I'm using an orange RX. So what we need to do though before we bind everything together is make sure that we have the correct uh, setup in our model in our radio first. So we're going to want to go into uh, model type, select airplane, make sure an airplane, and then you're going to want to go into aircraft type. So this is where I can now select different wing styles. Now I'm going to want to scroll across here to Elevon mixing. So there we go, Elevon. So I'm going to select that. And then I go back to my main list, back to our main screen. And then, so now we're set up with our plane and we're in uh, Elevon mixing mode. So now we're going to come back to our original model. Uh, so obviously I've got all my stuff embedded in it, we're going to ignore that for now because that's just my FPV gear. So all we're concentrating on is our servos with our linkages. So inside we've got our three wires. So we've got servos, so that's our servo extensions, and then we've got one more which is our throttle. So what I'm going to do is just plug them into my receiver. So throttle goes into throttle. And because it's Elevon mixing, it's going to, you're going to plug one servo into aileron and the other servo into elevator. There we go. Now at this stage, we're ready to power it up and make sure that our servos are centered. Uh, so obviously again, make sure your prop is off your motor and just in case something happens and goes wrong. So we've got our receiver plugged in. We can now plug our battery in. And everything's going to initialize. So now what we can do is now our servos are centered, we can now attach the arms to the bottom. So now they're attached, we can test out our controls. Yeah, it's good, so everything's moving. So we'll concentrate on direction in a minute, give throttle a check. Good, so our throttle's working. So now we can unplug our battery because we've got everything centered and we know it's all working. So once we've got our servo linkages plugged in, what we want to make sure is that this is 
that this elevator's got a slight, well, both of them have got a slight up deflection in them. So if I put a straight edge on here, so I put my pen on there, you can see that there's a hole underneath. It's not completely flapped to the foam. So you need to make sure you have a slight up deflection in your elevator, in both of them, before you maiden it. Otherwise, it'll, so it'll have a tendency just to push itself straight into the floor when you first launch it. So make sure you have that same deflection on both of your elevators. So now everything's set up, this takes us on to one of the most important things of the plane. Making sure that our control, our control surfaces move in the correct direction. So when I pull down, my elevons are going to move up, so it's going to force the nose of the plane up. So I'm going to pull up. If I push down, it's going to bring the nose down. Now when I go left, it's going to bring the left elevate, uh, elevon up and the right one down. I'm going to go right, it's going to bring the right one up and the left one down. So this is important. If for any reason th these control surfaces are reversed, there's two ways around this. You can either swap the servos in the connection to your receiver, so swap the aileron into the elevator server, just swap them around, or go into your uh, settings on your radio and reverse the elevators in there. So this is what you want to happen with your control surfaces with your radio. It's very important to check this every time before you fly, just in case something has reversed itself. So we're very, very close now to be able to fly. Just one important thing to be aware of all the time with these wings is the CG, the center of gravity. So the center of gravity on these models is marked at this line here. So this is where the, the skid plate, the end of the skid plate is. Now what I've done is I've marked level with that, just some black lines that just make it easier for me to see uh, when I'm testing out in the field. So I can just put my hands on there, make sure that the model's balancing and then we're good to go. So what I've done at the moment is just built this little test jig, so we'll put the plane on there and just show you it balancing on the CG. So here we've got the model just balancing nicely. You can see, just, just there, just having to give it a quick, just hold it a bit. Just make sure you're balancing on the CG. Now ideally you want to be a tiny bit sort of nose down, um, but as long as it balances nicely around that area then that's fine. So thank you all very much for watching uh, this build series. A uh, big thanks again to flyerwings.co.uk for supplying the wing uh, so we could make this series. Uh, I hope you all enjoy flying a wing. I have a lot of fun flying mine. Hopefully you all have as much fun flying yours. Stay tuned uh, to Fly Past RC for more videos on RC. Enjoy.